नीड फॉर स्क्रीनिंग फॉर डिस्लिपिड मैन डायबिटीज टेक्निकली स्पीकिंग दिस इज जस्ट थेरोटिकल काइंड ऑफ अ स्लाइड वाई बिकॉज एवरी डायबिटिक स्पेशली टाइप टू डायबिटीज यू हैव टू डू दी ए बी सी सो एच बी एवन सी ब्लड प्रेशर मेजरमेंट एंड लिपिड लेवल्स यू हैव टू डू इट फॉर एवरी डायबिटिक हु इज कमिंग टू योर क्लिनिक हाउ एवर दी पॉइंट इज हाउ फ्रिक्वेंटली दैट इज टू बी डन in which patient you have to do it you can say as a priority etc so who should be tested people with type 2 diabetes are considered to be at high risk of vascular events compared to non diabetics of course as a result regardless of other risk factors for example age gender hypertension family history smoking or physical examination presence of hypertension obesity pcos in women you have to look at the lipid levels so they are to be screened for dyslipidemia so all type 2 diabetic patients get their lipid levels especially when they come to your clinic or if it has not been done in the recent past in type 1 diabetes screening for dyslipidemia should be initiated from the age of 12 years in case of known family history of uh, dyslipidemia hypercholesteremia early cvd or if the family history is unknown screening should begin at the age of 2 years mind you 2 years so very young children if results are within normal limits screening should be repeated every 5 years that is as far as type 1 diabetes is concerned now basic physical examination must be done height weight body uh, the uh, body mass index waist circumference especially that's very important you know very well that indians are notoriously centrally obese rather than uh, whole body obesity blood pressure peripheral and carotid pulses lab evaluations the fasting lipid profile is uh, recommended in most of the situations and look at total cholesterol hdl cholesterol tg ldl c calculated non hdl comprehensive medical panel including uric acid hba1c Uh, thyroid levels non fasting lipid levels are effective in initial screening non hdl is a reasonable screening test as well non hdl should routinely be calculated in diabetic patients owing to the higher prevalence of elevated tg and small dense hdl assessment of apob or ldl particles lpa and uh, uh, high sensitive c reactive protein should also be considered with uh, due diligence diagnostic procedures could include resting cardiogram may be stress test or treadmill chemical and or nuclear stress test if required now just a brief discussion on fasting lipid profile and non i am not saying versus fasting lipid profile and non fasting lipid profile what are what is fasting lipid profile what are the good points it's a gold standard for atherosclerotic or atherogenic risk assessment highly sensitive to detect triglyceride levels especially in patients with insulin resistance you know very well that typical diabetic dyslipidemia is characterized by certainly high ldl not too much high certainly high triglycerides are certainly high and hdl is low so for triglycerides it is very important because triglyceride in a postprandial state is something which is which could be high in even non diabetic patients diabetic patients very obviously so fasting triglycerides is something which is important especially in patients who have insulin resistance preferable in certain high risk patients or those with severe hypertriglyceridemia for exact diagnosis and therapeutic monitoring preferable when non fasting triglyceride is 440 or up uh, because all of you are aware that the friedwald equation of calculating ldl uh, that goes or if the triglycerides are high to be considered after 2 to few 4 weeks when non fasting triglyceride is more than 200 so that's the uh, let's say semantics of fasting non fasting more convenient detects the plasma lipid levels of both atherogenic lipoproteins of hepatic descent as well as those originating from the intestines preferred in patients with diabetes due to increased risk of hypoglycemia with fasting this is applicable for only in maybe a few cases where probably the uh, you can say risk of hypo is high low density lipoprotein cholesterol ldl can be precisely assessed using modern techniques reduces the patient barrier to testing increases the patient convenience and compliance and decreases the strain on laboratory facilities that's something important but you can you have to certainly decide which patient can be uh, okay for non fasting and which patient you have to insist on fasting that's your discretion depending on the clinical situation now these are the Uh, rough you can say cutoffs uh, fasting cutoffs of tc tg hdl non hdl ldl remnant cholesterol lpa apolipoprotein a apolipoprotein b so generally fasting 
more than uh, 150 of uh, TG, more than 100 of uh, apolipoproteins and LDL more than 115. Non-fasting, uh, LDL doesn't matter. It's almost going to be same. Uh, TG certainly can because non-fasting, it should be the cutoff is 175 because as I told you, a TG can get affected because of the feeding status. So non-HDL should be calculated in every subject as per the Lipid Association of India recommendation, non-HDL, which is equal to total cholesterol minus HDL, includes all circulating atherogenic lipoproteins and is therefore a more accurate predictor of ASCVD risk, particularly in patients who have elevated triglycerides. For example, in diabetics, obese people, or those with metabolic syndrome, or those who are already on statin treatment. The Lipid Association of India recommends non-HDL as a co-primary target, as important as LDL for lipid-lowering therapy. And these are again some additional models as I told you. Here comes that Q-Risk 3. And then there are others like maybe assign C-Risk as a estimation model for Scottish Intercollegiate Guideline Network. So that's valid in Scotland. Then the ProCam, Prospective Cardiovascular Munster Study that's depending on what cohort of people, Reynolds risk score, cure, pooled cohort equation, global risk, so on and so forth. These days they also use what is called as a polygenic uh, risk score which depends on the genetic wiring or genetic analysis of the patient and uh, this is uh, something which is from our own journal which is uh, international journal of diabetes in developing countries and these are from the our own rshdi guidelines which were published in 2022 apart from the lipid levels there are other factors which also decide the atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease risk so we will not only bank on ldl we will also bank on those factors. For example, high blood pressure or high HbA1c, glycemic variability, all these are going to increase the ASCVD risk. But importantly, the imaging uh, techniques, for example, to image coronary artery calcium or coronary artery calcium score or CAC score, what is the recommendation by the National Lipid Association USA in different age groups, 30 to 39, 40 to 75 or more than 75 years? These are the uh, you can say recommendations uh, if the patient has long standing diabetes, type 1 diabetes, more angiopathy, you should be looking at CAC score. CAC uh, scoring may be reasonable to aid the uh, decision for or calculation of ASCVD risk. Similarly, in the other age groups, uh, if LDL is between 70 to 189, patient age 40 to 75, then moderate or high intensity statin is indicated regardless of CAC score and so on and so forth. So just keep it in mind that coronary artery calcium score calculation also can help uh, estimation of ASCVD risk and your diabetic dyslipidemia management can certainly be modified according to that. So you have now decided the risk of the patient. If the patient has a high risk, diabetes with 0 to 1 major ASCVD risk factors and no evidence of target organ damage, then the LDL target is less than 70, 70. Very high risk. Diabetes with more than two other major ASCVD risk factors and evidence of target organ damage, that LDL target is less than 50, 50 or 55, you can say. And diabetes with coronary artery disease, established ASCVD and other major ASCVD risk factors, the this is called as extremely high risk, especially people who have got repeated major adverse cardiovascular events, then the LDL target is less than 30 uh, as far as the latest uh, thought lines are concerned. And diabetic dyslipidemia management not only is with pharmacotherapy, but some kind of you can say diet also. So 50 to 60 percent of the total caloric intake should be uh, or less than 50 to 60 percent calories should be out of carbohydrates. India is notoriously known for high carb intake. That's why this instruction is important. Low glycemic index uh, and low glycemic load kind of carbohydrate should be taken. So uh, the uh, millets, the uh, coarsely ground uh, cereals rather than the refined uh, maidas and all those things or maybe refined carbs, simple sugars, etc., uh, technically limited use of rice, especially again for Indian patients and the fiber intake should be high, 40 grams at least or more. And then as far as the fats are concerned, less than 30% of the total calorie intake should arise out of fats. Saturated fatty acids should be less than 10% of the total calories. Avoid high saturated fats, avoid hydrogenated uh, vegetable oils. Proteins, 15% or more 
of the caloric intake should be out of proteins. Consider the age and comorbidities and renal status of the patient. Red meats generally are to be avoided. Prefer first class source of other proteins. So that's the broad dietary instruction for diabetic dyslipidemia management. Now, patients with diabetes and no ACVD, no target organ damage, uh, as far as these are concerned, uh, that the risk is low. So, uh, LDL target less than 70. Patients with diabetes, no ACVD, but with target organ damage and with more than two risk factors, ACVD risk factors, LDL goal less than 50. Those with very high risk, extremely high risk, LDL target less than 30. That need not now be re reiterated. This is from Journal of Clinical Lipidology. These are National Lipid Association USA guidelines published April 2023. Now, there is a, this is a guideline from the Korean Society. I am just trying to display. I displayed you uh, American guidelines, AAC. I displayed the National Lipid Association guidelines. I am continuously alluding to our own RSHDI and Lipid Association of India. This is from the Korea, uh, Korean Society of uh, uh, Lipid and Atherosclerotic uh, or, or Lipid Association. And what is their target? Primary target goal should be uh, controlling the LDL, determine the LDL treatment goals for each. Again, they have uh, asked you to look at the uh, cardiovascular disease risk, target organ damage, and in patients with type 2 diabetes, CVD, LDL goal of less than 55 and reduction of LDL by less than whatever level you start with. More than 50% reduction should happen. That's something which is important. For the primary prevention of cardiovascular disease in patients with type 2 diabetes who have a duration of diabetes more than 10 years or who have major CV risk factors or target organ damage, LDL goal less than 70. As I told you, most of the diabetics should be less than 70 of LDL. Uh, for primary prevention of CVD in type 2 diabetic patients who have any target organ damage or more than three major CV risk factors, LDL target less than 55 and of course in very high risk less than 30. <laughs>